What's up, Relevant Church? It is finally December, finally the Christmas season. Who is excited? Are you excited? Not me. No, I'm not Okay, excited. well, you're just a Grinch. Okay. So, and nothing <laughs> says Christmas in Florida more than a popsicle. So, we have our popsicles here. <laughs> I just want to welcome any first time guests in the house. We're so happy that you're here. My name is Morgan. I would love to meet you after service. I will be by the next step stations. I'd love to help you get connected. And I also have a gift for you, so come find me. Yeah, and talking about being connected, actually, on the back of your seats, the seat back in front of you, there's a, a QR code. You're gonna see that. If you're in the front, you'll probably see it on the screen. And that is our way for you to get connected with Relevant Church. Everyone here at Relevant Church has a next step. Whether you've been here for five minutes, five days, five months, or five mm -hmm. years, we all have a next step. It could be prayer requests, it could be signing up for events, it could be giving, whatever that is, that's gonna be found on that QR code at the seat back in front of you. And talking about events, actually. One event I would like to highlight is our biggest event of the year. It is our Christmas is Near event happening December 23rd from 5 to 9 p.m. Come join us, bring your friends, bring your family. It's gonna be huge, so we'll have food trucks, we'll have the Christmas concert featuring Kenzie Wheeler, runner up on The Voice, rekindled our relevant church band, which is amazing. And we'll have activities for your kids, photo opportunities with Santa, we'll have real reindeer. How cool is that? Sick. So yeah, make sure to check more information out by visiting our website. Yeah, and that next day, December 24th at 4 p.m., we are having a Christmas Eve service. We want you to be there. It's going to be an awesome time to celebrate the birth of Christ. And that Sunday coming up, uh, December 26th, we are not having in-person services, but we are having an online service. That's going to be at relevantchurch.com, our Facebook page, our YouTube page. You're not going to want to miss it. If you come to the church as much as I would love to see you, mm -hmm. not going to be there. So I just yep. don't want to disappoint you there. <laughs> and that's all we have for you guys. You can sign up for all these events all these volunteer opportunities by visiting our website, relevantchurch.com slash events, or by scanning that QR code on the seat backs in front of you. Awesome, hope and you guys it. enjoy the service. Bye right. guys. See ya. Perfect. Jeez oh Louise. man, sorry.
pom 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 To lay before a king pom 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 So to honor him pom 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 When we come
song so much because it glorifies the name of God. Emmanuel, God with us. Our Heavenly Father who left the heavenly places to meet with us to be the antidote for sin. Lord, I pray that today as we celebrate what your Son has done, Lord, I pray that we would reflect on your goodness and how no other God is like you, Jesus. We praise and worship you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. You guys may be seated. I want to do you a favor, give you some very important announcements because you will find yourself the only person here, okay? December 26th, that is an online service only, all right? So if you come in person, you can watch online. 
in the patio, okay? Because we're not going to be here, all right? We want you guys to enjoy Christmas with your family. That includes watching service online at 10 and 11, 30. I want to make sure I make that very clear so that way some of you guys aren't surprised when you come here on the 26th, okay? So next Sunday is online only. Can we, we're going to do a student ministry real quick. Can everyone say online only? Everyone who did not participate, don't be surprised when you're here on the 26th, okay? Uh, no, hey, real quick though, we do have announced that's the most important announcement. If you are part of Christmas is Near and volunteering on the 23rd, we have our volunteer meeting after the second service here, right here, just immediately after. We're going to give you guys instructions, let you guys know how it's going to go so that we guys are prepared for the 23rd, which did you guys know Christmas is Near is like super near? Did you guys know that? Okay, Paul knows that. That's good. All right, we'll try that again. You guys know Christmas is near is like super near? Woo! Yeah, man, we're preparing. It's going to be a blast. Um, And so we want to make sure you guys, if you still, if you want to be a part of that and you haven't signed up to be a volunteer, you can still, hey, just just hang out. That's all you got to do. And uh, you can, you'll be given a job at marching orders right after the second service. So if you are a volunteer, make sure you pay attention for that. Um, But everything else, you guys have prayer request. If this is your first time, maybe you got a nice goodie bag, whatever it is, the best way that we connect with you guys is through that QR code in the seat back in front of you. If you're sitting up front, it's actually on the screens. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the phone out and you probably want to keep it out because we got some more instructions for you later on. But you take that phone out, scan that QR code. And in that QR code is many links for you to take your next step, whether it's prayer request, connection card, giving events, small groups, all these things is right there on that QR code. It allows you to say, what's my next step and how can I take it today? It's through that connection card. It's through that QR code. So scan it, open it up on your phone. You can do that at any point in time during the service. You can even follow along with Paul's notes through that connection card on that QR code. All right, we wanna push you guys there because that's how we connect. That's how we do life together. Um, So that being said, let's check out that video one more time for the final week of Cracking Christmas. guys today. I will tell you, I've had so much coffee today. You have no idea how jacked up I am today. I, I, I just want you to know that I live on coffee like for the week before Christmas is near, like by the gallons. And uh, I'm always grateful like when I'm doing our volunteer prayer time, because if you don't know this, before you guys ever get here, there's a group of volunteers that are here, some as early as like 6.30 in the morning, prepping for you guys to be here. But at 9.30, we pray for you guys and we pray for the service every single Sunday with a team of volunteers that are making the service happen. And this service doesn't happen without an incredible team of people. Can we give it up for those people? They are absolutely incredible and I love them. Uh, and, and I will tell you this week, um, things are kind of at a feverish pitch because yes, Christmas is near, is almost here. And I'm going to try to rhyme as much as I can. Um, but what I need for you guys to do is help us out. And here's why because the birth of Jesus matters. Like, it is the greatest thing that has ever happened. It is, it is the most significant birth in all of history because, because of his birth and his subsequent death, we have been given life that we did not deserve. 
And that is the most important thing that we could share. And guys, we get to do that in a public setting. Do you know that around the world, there are people who literally go to prison for sharing the message of Jesus Christ. And we get to do it. We get invited to do it. And this Thursday night in Eastern Hillsborough County, we get to participate in Christmas is Near. And there are five other pastors in Eastern Hillsborough County that have chosen to join us this year. And here's what we're gonna do. What we're trying to do is get the word out as much as possible. Now, how many of you, this is not an indictment on you, okay? So you don't have to feel like you're about to get in trouble. But how many of you have checked some sort of social media status this morning already? How many of you have done that already this morning? Very good. How many of you use some sort of social media platform at least once a week? How many of you do that? Very good. Now I want you to get out your phone. Because we're going to do, an, this is what we call an all skate, okay? This is an all skate. And, and, and so we're going to do an all skate together. Like so, uh, those, are only, those are my old school friends who understand what an all skate is, okay? How many of you remember the couple skate back in the day? You know what I mean? When you're like the lonely guy on the corner, like, who am I going to ask to couple skate with me? And then you're still that guy and nobody's skating with you. And then, and then they call it an all skate. You're like, okay, sweet. I can go out there. It's an all skate. I can do that. This is an all skate. Get your phone out. Here's where I want you to go. I want you to go to Relevant Church's Facebook page. Find Relevant Church. Okay? Relevant Church Tampa. It's very easy to find. We just, Sammy just posted something on Facebook. I believe we have it on the side screens. Do we not have the picture on the side screens? It looks just like this. This is the post I want you to look for. It is the post with me and the five other pastors in Eastern Hillsborough County who are partnering with us for Christmas is Near. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to like that post. I want you to comment on that post. And I would love for you to share that post with somebody else. Just share it on your page. I'm, here's, here's the cool thing. Do you know that doing the like, comment, and share doesn't cost us one penny? but we exponentially reach thousands more than we could ever reach without it. And so if you guys will help us with that, that will be huge. And here's what I would love for you to do this week. In your chair, you have these vouchers. It says, come sit with me. Why come to Christmas is near alone? And, I, and here's, I do hear this sometimes. People go, Christmas is near is all the way out in Plant City. I'm like, are you telling me you don't drive any further than 30 minutes? In a, week, in a given week's time, I, I would literally drive for hours if I knew that I could invite a friend and they might trust Christ as their personal savior and they might be rescued from death to life. What would that cost? And it costs nothing except an invite. And on this invite card, maybe this week you wanna take a picture of this and say, hey, listen, my church just gave me five of these. The first five of my friends who say they want it can have it. I've got a $5 off coupon for any of the food trucks. It's one per family. I mean, it's free money. It's free food. And, and for me, I'm like, if it's free food, I, I'm coming. I, I, wanna, I wanna be part of that. It's gonna be an incredible night. We have Kinsey Wheeler from The Voice uh, that is gonna actually do part of the pre-show. We've got a bluegrass band that's gonna do part of the pre-show. And I will tell you, I know that Pastor Edgar and our worship team has been working for literally months on, on the service that they have planned for us for that evening. And guys, it's gonna be an incredible night. I want you to pray for me about one thing. I am not gonna preach a traditional Christmas message on Christmas because here's what I think. Most people understand the birth of Jesus because they hear it every time they go to church at Christmas. Like, I know that guy. I know that's that little, you know, uh, six pound, eight ounce, little baby Jesus, you know, with the golden fleece diaper. And I know that guy, I know him. And, and, and we feel like we know that guy. So we come on Christmas and then we come on Easter and we know that that same baby grew up and he died on a cross and I know that. And I get the bookends, but I don't know him. I don't want people to know the bookends. I wanna know, I want them to know that he came for you and for me. And so I'm gonna preach a, a very unorthodox message from the word of God that lets people know that Jesus Christ was born and died for them because of the greatest need that they had. And so I want you to pray for that. We're praying the word, there's one word that we're praying, we're praying harvest. I'm praying that, that God reaps a harvest of people who do not know him. And so I just ask for you to pray. We've got lots of other cool things. Like if you, uh, if you live like on a busy road 
And you want a yard sign? We have yard signs. They're out in the lobby. You can grab one of these on your way out. There's lots of other invite cards that you have on your seats. I don't want to see any of these cards left on the seats. Just take them and pass them out to everybody, if you would. And then every time you see a comment or a post on Facebook this week or on Instagram, if you'd like it, comment and share. And that's free advertising. Every other church is doing the same thing this morning. So what we're hoping to do is get Christmas is near to be trending on, on Facebook today because all the other five churches are all doing the same thing today uh, because we're saying we want the message to get out there. And so thank you guys for doing that. Can we pray today and ask God to be with us? God, we love you. God, we know that you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and you love us in spite of us. And so God, today, I pray that as we open your word, that, that your word would go forth, that truth would prevail, and that we would see your kingdom come and your will done in our lives, in our church, in our homes today. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. So we've been on this series called Cracking Christmas. And what we've been doing is we've been exploring the context of, of, this, of this birth that happened in Bethlehem that seemed to have happened in an obscure place to a very obscure couple. And it seemed like the, the person who was born was born of no, of no significance. And yet he became the most significant and prominent figure of all time. And so we looked, we said, how, how could this be? And we looked the first week, we looked in the book of Isaiah, a book that was written by the prophet Isaiah 700 years before Christ ever walked the face of the earth. And he declared that Emmanuel would come. And then last week, we looked at a contemporary of Isaiah. His name was Micah. And Micah didn't write specifically about the child that was born, but he did write about the birthplace of the child. And you couple those two things together and you realize that this is extremely significant because out of insignificance, the insignificant place called Bethlehem came the significant person, Jesus Christ. And so today I want to look at what does that all mean for us? Like how, how many of you um, have Christmas traditions? How many of you have Christmas traditions that you do every single year? How many, of you, um, how many of you open all of your presents on Christmas Eve? How many are Christmas Eve present openers? A few, okay. How many of you are Christmas Day openers? Now, how many of you, let me ask this question because this is interesting because I know that people are different. How many of you, you go around the room and everybody opens one present at a time and you kind of go around the room? How many of you? Do I have any just, everybody gets all their presents and you just tear them all open all at the same time? Do we have any all at the same free-for-alls? Oh, we got a couple free-for-alls. I like that. That's just complete chaos is what that is. Like, there's wrapping flying everywhere, man. People are going nuts. Like, but tradition is great. I remember when Susie's parents were still alive. The one thing that they loved for us to do when we would go to Indiana is get around the piano in the living room. I don't know if you got a family like that. But we would get around the piano in the living room and, and Susie would play Christmas carols. And her mom and dad would sit in their chairs and all of Susie's siblings and all the son-in-laws and all the grandkids would stand around and just sing Christmas carols to them. That was their gift. They loved that. I remember, I had never, I never how many of you grew up going Christmas caroling? Anybody grew up going Christmas? Like that's not at that, but a few, a few people did. My wife's family grew up doing that all the time. Like the first time I went up there for Christmas, they're like, we're going Christmas carol. And I said, what's that? They said, we're going we're gonna to walk up to random people's house and we're going to sing. I was like, why? <laughs> why? Why do we do that? Who would do that? You don't do that in Florida. You don't just walk up to a random person's house and start, start singing. It's weird. It's awkward then. And, and, but they would do it. And then they would go to, to shut-ins, um, older people who couldn't get out. And they would go sing Christmas carols. And it was interesting to me that people would come out of their homes and they would just sit and the smiles on their faces, especially of some of these elderly people who couldn't get out, that felt valued at that time. And I was like, man, what a tradition to bring back. And you know what? It, all of those traditions, all the traditions you have, all revolve around this infant in a manger. Like, you know, it all points back to him. And, and so today I want to take one of those one of those Christmas carols, and I want to ask the question, or maybe answer the question, what child is this? What, what child is this? Who is this child that has literally shaped the course of history? And why? And is it, is it that 
significant? And I would say, yes. I don't know how many of you like to go look at Christmas lights. Uh, we as a family love to go look at Christmas lights. Um, we like to grade, anybody grade Christmas lights? Like if you're driving down the road, like you're driving down a neighborhood, here's what we're, we're like, Scrooge McDuck, okay, good. And we just keep going and we're like, oh, oh, yes, I, I, I love Griswolds. And you like, we grade them as we go. They don't know that we're grading them, but we, we grade them. And, and we have a great time doing that, but we've been doing that for years. But it's amazing to recognize that 2,020 years after the birth of Jesus, we're still talking about him. I actually believe that he is the Christ. I'm one of those crazy followers who actually believes that Jesus is who he says he is. And he was the gift of God for humanity. And we can have conversations and lots of conversations around the table. And, and, and do you notice that you can talk to people about spirituality? People like to talk about spirituality. People like to, to talk about good vibes and good feelings. But when you name the name of Jesus, it literally solidifies you and it pigeonholes you to a certain sect of people who believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God Emmanuel, God with us, God in the flesh, and it is a distinction that is different than anything else. I started thinking about this this week. Like, do you know that Jesus, the name of Jesus is the only one that uses a curse word? Do you ever think about that? He's the only one that you, that you stub your toe or smash your finger and you use his name. Nobody says, oh, Buddha. Like, nobody ever says that. Nobody does that. Muhammad, nobody Krishna, nobody does that, it's crazy. So why is this name so significant if he isn't who he says he is? I, I think that it's fascinating that even in a culture who does not necessarily prescribe to the validity of who Jesus is, yet they ascribe to him some sort of authority without even knowing it. Because the person Jesus demands authority. And today I want to talk about this child in a manger. I want to teach you a couple of Hebrew, a Hebrew word and a, and a Greek word. We're going to learn two Greek words today. But, but here's the, the first word. It's hene. It's hene. It, it is a Hebrew word. So let's say it together. Hene on three. One, two, three. Hene. All right? So you got that one. So now you know a Hebrew word. All of you can say we took Hebrew today at church. This is really good. And now we're going to talk about Greek. This is the Greek word, and it is adu. Okay, let's do it on three. One, two, three. If you've been married, you did adu. Like you said, I do. Like you get it. That's how it works. So we got hene and adu. And you say, Paul, what, is these, what do these two words mean? These two words are significant, especially in the story of Christmas. Especially in the story of Jesus, because we find Hene in the Old Testament, and we find I do in the New Testament, and they both mean the same thing. Both of these words, the Hebrew word Hene, the Greek word I do, both mean to see or to behold. And when Jesus Christ was prophesied that he was going to come on the scene, they used the word Hene. Which, which in modern day, it would be like, hey, pay attention. You need to get this. Dude, you need to check this out. How many of you have ever had a post on Instagram or a post on Facebook where you said, check this out with an exclamation point? How many of you ever told something like that or seen something like that? We, we all have. Check it out, man. You don't want to miss this. And hey, I do. You got to see this. You got to behold this. And when Jesus broke through. We need to check him out. We need to see who this child really is. And the first thing that we're going to find out is we have to behold Jesus, the baby, in a manger. Now, I don't know if you have a nativity scene. Susie and I have nativity scenes. Uh, we, we, we have the little one that's set up in our house. We have the old one outside. And, and we have nativity scenes. One year, we realized that somebody stole our baby Jesus. Who steals baby Jesus? Like, who does that? 
But they were, they returned him. Praise the Lord. They returned baby Jesus. But they stole him for like a week or so. He was gone. I was like, where did baby Jesus go? I don't know where he went. Maybe somebody needed him though. But here's what we typically think about. We think about this, this baby in a manger, this infant in a manger. We, we, we think about him, but we, we just think about him as a baby in a manger. And, and we, we don't think about the significance of who this baby in a manger is. Isaiah though says this. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Hene, Hene, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us. 700 years before Jesus, a prophet was saying, you gotta see this. You gotta behold this. Don't miss this. And I think when Jesus, when God went silent for 400 years, people stopped looking. People stopped believing that this Emmanuel, God with us, might even come. And, and, and the people in the Old Testament would have understood this idea of Emmanuel, this idea of the Messiah, they would have been like, yes, that's the person we're waiting for. That's the person we've been waiting for. That's the person that we, that my mom and my dad and my grandmother and my grandfather and my great aunt, my great uncle, they've talked about Emmanuel. They talked about the Messiah, that the Messiah would someday come. And Isaiah's going, no, he's going to come. And this is how he's going to come. You see, do you focus on just this baby in a manger, this infant who doesn't look powerful, doesn't look like the creator of the universe that you would anticipate, but, but Emmanuel, as God with us, was born to die for the sins of the world. This God with us, this infant in a manger, was not born for a manger and he wasn't born for a palace. He was born with a destiny in mind and the destiny was always the cross. The destiny was always redemption. The purpose was you. The purpose was me. And Isaiah 700 years prior says, behold, check him out. And I wonder if because we are somewhat removed and maybe even desensitized to our own sin. I wonder if we, if we miss the fact that he came for me. You see, because he didn't just come as a baby in a manger. I want you to behold the baby in a manger, but, but I also want you to look into the New Testament because John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus, who was, who was born six months prior to Jesus, actually makes a statement. He calls him, behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God. So he is Emmanuel, God with us, the child in a manger. But John says the next day he saw Jesus coming toward him, and he said, behold, look at him, look at him, look at him. He's the Lamb of God. He takes away the sins of the world. It's interesting because as a Jewish person growing up, they would have understood what a sacrifice of a lamb was all about. Because every year at the Passover, they would do that. Every year at the Passover, the Passover would, the, the, the family member would go and they would find a spotless lamb. And I know that it's extremely graphic, but what they would do is they would sacrifice the lamb by, by actually slitting the lamb's throat. And I know that that sounds pretty, pretty graphic, but they would let the blood spill into a bowl. And to represent how, how God, Yahweh, delivered them out of Egypt, what they would do is they would take that bowl and they would take a brush and they would dip it in that blood and they would put it over the, over the doorpost and they would put it on the side post. And it would be this, this picture of, of the Passover. And it would be the picture of this death angel passing over them. In other words, they deserve death. But the sacrifice of the lamb covered them. And John now says, behold, the lamb of God. 
the lamb in the flesh who takes away the sins of the world. I found a picture of a, of a Jewish home. And this is what they would do at Passover every year. It was interesting because I started reading kind of some other Jewish history, and, and it said that a lot of times when, when they would put the blood over the top of the doorpost, what it would do is it would begin to trickle down and it would run right down the center of the door. And then there are two blood spots on the side, and if you were to connect those two, it would actually make the perfect view of a cross. And the Passover was this prequel to the cross of Christ. And John said, don't miss him. He's not just a baby in a manger. He's not just Emmanuel, God with us. He is the Lamb of God. Don't miss the Lamb of God. I love what the book of Revelation says about him. It says, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb. He's worthy to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. This, this same baby in a manger is also the Lamb of God and he is worthy of us worshiping him. He is worthy of us saying that his name is above every name and that his name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. He's worthy, he's that worthy. I wonder, like during this season, do we, do we read Luke 2 and skip over the magnitude of Emmanuel? Do we read Luke 2 and it sounds really quaint and it sounds wonderful that, that shepherds are abiding in the field and, and, and they're waiting and the angels talk to them and then wise men come and, and, and it's, it all sounds so, so precious, but do we miss the magnitude of it? You see, if we're, if we're gonna really crack the case of Christmas, what we have to do is we have to move out of the manger and move on to the main reason why he came. which was to be redemption for those that needed redemption. And that includes all of humanity. That includes me, it includes you. So we have to behold this Emmanuel, this baby in a manger. We have to behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And then we have to behold Jesus, the God-man. This is the most mind-blowing thing of all. How can he be fully God and fully man at the same time? And there have been, there's been much debate about that for centuries. There have been great scholars who debate whether the fact that Jesus could be all God and all man at the same time. And I have heard some, even in recent days, say, well, does it really matter that Jesus was all God and all man? Does it really matter? Would it, would it really matter if Jesus was, was literally the sinless atonement for humanity? And I say, yes, it does matter. It matters significantly because without a spotless, sinless lamb of God, redemption is impossible. And I know people would say, well, if God wanted to do it, couldn't he? Yes, but this is the way he chose. If it could have been done any other way, why would he have done it this way? And we can speculate that until the return of Christ. And it is not ours to speculate about. It is his word. And I love <coughs> John chapter 19, where a pagan ruler actually is the one who declares that Jesus as the God-man. The, the pagan ruler makes this statement. It says, Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe, and Pilate said to them, behold, the man. You know why he was crucified, right? Because he claimed to be God in the flesh. He was crucified for heresy. And yet he 
wasn't heretical, he was deity. He was truly the God man. And what did Pilate say? He said, Behold the man. Jesus was miraculously God, 100% God and 100% man. At the same time, he was God in human form. He wasn't ordinary, he was extraordinary. And because he was the God man, he was actually able to show something that most people cannot show. We can show semblances of this, but we can't show it in its totality. And, and, it's, and it's a Greek word, and, and the Greek word is, is pretty interesting. Uh, the Greek word for this is spagnizma. So that's a fun one right there. Like that took me literally all week to actually get the pronunciation right. I actually have it phonetically written out in my notes because I knew that I would completely mess it up. Um, But the the word spagnizma actually means compassion. There are multiple times within scripture, especially within the New Testament where you read about Jesus and it says, and he looked upon them and had compassion. Compassion. It says one time that he looked upon the needs of the people and he said he felt compassion on them because they were, they were like sheep without a shepherd. They had desperate need and he said, he said, I have compassion on them. Only God and man could do that. Yes, we can show compassion, but Jesus showed compassion for people that we ignore. Just look in the New Testament and look at who Jesus hung out with. He hung out with lepers. Interesting. People who had contagious, infectious diseases who everyone else would have stayed away from, Jesus went to them and embraced them. He went where people said, you can't do that. And he said, I will do that. Well, what kind of compassion did he show? He he would go and find a blind person and he would allow them to see. He would see a lame person and he would heal them and let them walk. He would find a prostitute who was an outcast and he would deliver her and forgive her. He would find a woman caught in adultery who everyone else brings out and drags out into the street and is about to stone her and he would offer forgiveness and hope for a future that she never thought was possible. That's compassion. That's that's this baby in a manger. See, he was more than just a a baby in a manger. He was the Lamb of God. He was the God-man. That's why Isaiah says this, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. I want you to realize what he did and who he did it for. Have you ever read Isaiah 53 and inserted your name? He was pierced for Paul's transgression. He was crushed for Paul's iniquity. And upon him was the chastisement that brought Paul peace. You see, it's personal. It's it's not just global, it's personal. It's for you, it's for me. And with his wounds, we are healed. And it says this, but then it describes us. And it says, all of us like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord still laid on him. God, Yahweh, <clears throat> laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. So you say, what child is this? Well, behold it. Don't miss it. It's Jesus, the Christ child, Emmanuel. Behold Don't miss this, it's Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold, don't miss this, it's Jesus, the God-man. Behold, it's Jesus, the soon-returning king. I don't know where you land uh, eschatologically. I don't know where you land on, on end times, but I know this, that wherever you land, Like it or not, the word of God is still clear that Jesus Christ is returning. He is returning. You say, Paul, when? I go, well, that'd be a great thing. I could write a book on it. And a lot of people have tried. And then they've had to change the date on the book. 
Because according to scripture, it says that, that you, can, you can write about it, but you don't know about it because it says only God, only Yahweh knows the day or the time. But I do know this, that I can trust him because he's never let me down before. Everything he's always said, he has always fulfilled. And I love the fact that Revelation 22 says, behold, I am coming, bringing my recompense with me. And I, I, I looked up the word recompense because I was like, what is, what is the word recompense? What, is, what does that actually, that word mean? The, the word recompense is reward. To repay each one for what he has done. I get a reward? There's a trophy involved? Like, I don't know about you, but like whenever I run like a, a race, a marathon or, or, or any kind of 5K or anything, I always run it because they give me a medal at the end. And, and, and all of scripture says run in such a way that you might receive the reward. And here's the cool thing. The rewards that we get from Jesus are laid back at Jesus' feet. He, he rewards us so that we can give it back because it was really all about him. And he says, I'm the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He said he's coming again and he's bringing rewards. And when he, and when he comes again, he comes with a different thought in mind. I, I love Revelation 19. It says, then I saw heaven opened and before and behold, behold, check it out, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes are like flames of fire and on his head are many diadems. And he has the name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood and the name by which he is called is the word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robes and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He is the soon returning king. And I can trust that and I can believe in that. And here's the last thing and I'm done. Behold Jesus, the one who wants to share his life with you. Don't miss this. He is not just a baby in a manger to be packed up with all of your Christmas decorations and, and put away. He, he is not just a, a child to be celebrated on Christmas and on Easter. He is not just a, a bookend person where we celebrate him, his birth and we celebrate his death, but we don't actually honor his life. He lives so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He wants to offer his life to us. And I don't think another verse shares it better than Revelation 3. And it's this kind of cheesy picture that I found online. And I, I think that it's interesting because it depicts a God who's a gentleman. He doesn't kick the door down of your heart. He knocks on it like a gentleman. And he says this, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. He says, relationships start, and God never stops knocking. I don't know where you've been. Maybe you go, Paul, no, God stopped knocking a long time ago. No, he didn't. You just stopped listening to the knock, but he's still knocking. He's just waiting for you to open the door. God never kicks in a door. He's a gentleman, and he waits for you to open the door. He's paid it all. All you have to do is receive it. And maybe that's you today. Maybe you go, Paul, you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. He does, and he loves you anyway. And he says, why live without a relationship with me when I came because I wanted to be with you? The very thing that we celebrate on Christmas 
is the most precious thing that God could have ever given us. It is the gift of his presence in our lives. Why would we live without his presence when he offers it freely? I would encourage you today as we sing these last few songs, I want to ask you to contemplate this. Do you have a personal relationship with the God man Jesus? Have you personally invited him into your life and asked him to forgive you of your sins and to indwell your life? And be Lord of your life? Guys, it's as simple as that because Jesus did all the hard work. But what you have to do is say, Yes, God, I repent of my sins and I want to receive the gift of eternal life. That's where it starts. Man, don't miss the magnitude of the manger today. Because the manger is the starting place to the wonder that is redemption that happened through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. We see the whole picture. Would you receive the person, Jesus, who the picture is talking about? Let's pray. God, we love you. God, I pray that today we not, might not miss what you're doing in the story. That we might realize that, God, the story and the message of the manger was for all of humanity who was in desperate need of a different message, a message of hope, a message of redemption that did not have to be renewed every year, but God, it would be once and for all done. We thank you for being the sacrifice for us so that we may be called the righteousness of God. Pray that we would receive that today. I pray that God, if we've received that, I pray that we would live in that today. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Let's stand and worship.
cool thing about the story of the baby in a manger is he didn't remain an infant in a manger. He grew up and he was Jesus, the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. And soon he will be Jesus Christ, the soon coming King who will, who will come and, and rule the earth but he will rule in righteousness and holiness and goodness. And the offer is still extended to each of us today. Will you come? Will you take the story of a baby in a manger and realize that it was the beginning, not the end? And it truly was the beginning of, of the end the law because Jesus Christ fulfilled the law in his life my prayer today is that wherever you find yourself uh, maybe today is the first time that you've said you know what I know the story of Jesus but today I wanted to know the person Jesus Christ my Savior and my Lord I mean, if you made a decision like that today I would I'd love to know about that. I'd love to celebrate with you. Um, that's why Pastor Joshua was talking about that QR code because here at Relevant Church, we use that for you to let us know what God's doing in your life. If you need prayer about something, you let us know about that. If you need prayer today, we have our prayer team. They're over here to my left. They would love to pray with you today. Don't leave here. If you've got a need today, they'd love to pray with you. I know this, this week, it's a busy week. Some of you are prepping for Christmas. Some of you are got to get your Christmas shopping done on Christmas Eve, whether you need to or not. Don't miss the presence of Almighty God this week. I would just ask that you would cover our team in prayer. I'd ask that you be there on Thursday night. It's going to be an incredible night. I was looking at the weather. I've been praying about weather. I know that you may not think that's a big deal, but I do. I pray about weather. The weather right now says it's going to be 69 degrees is the high on Thursday. Like sunny, 69 degrees. Like in the evening, it's going to cool down enough for you to drink some hot chocolate. Man, it is going to be incredible. I know God is going to show up in a huge way. Would you pray? Would you invest and invite in other people? invite them to come. God, I pray that God, you would dismiss us today with your blessing. We pray that God, you would be honored in everything that's done and said today. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus name. Amen. If you are a guest with us, see Morgan on your way out. We've got one more song and then Pastor Edgar will dismiss you guys. God bless you guys. We'll see you Thursday night at Christmas is near.
Rocks, hills, and plains Repeat the sounding joy Repeat the sounding joy Repeat, repeat the sounding Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We'll see you guys next week. And our Christmas is near.